The Kia EV6 is a car that a lot of people in our office like a lot, and I'm not among them. It's fantastic in many ways, and just incredibly annoying in a whole bunch of others. So I'm going to nitpick a whole bunch of things in this, and if those all seem like stuff that you can live with, there is a very good car underneath. Seeing it in person, I am shocked by how much I like the looks of the EV6. Just going off the photos, the Ionic 5 I thought looked incredible, and the EV6 was kind of eh. But having seen both of them in person, the Ionic 5 looks kind of like a chunker, and this thing, in my opinion at least, looks awesome, and a whole bunch of people in the office agree. Kind of have this cool, sporty, sort of catfishy front that goes into this long sweeping thing that goes up into the, people say it's an Austin Martin kind of tail light. I think it looks more like a Prius Prime, but whatever, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> My favorite part though is right under here, there's this little light that during the nighttime lights up the haunch. Kia calls it their silhouette lighting. It's pretty sweet if I'm honest. What surprised me the most about the looks though is that despite this being one of the first in Canada, no one cared, not a single second glance. You drive past a bunch of people and no one looks until I drove past a bunch of middle schoolers on their little e-scooters. They were just like, oh, oh my God. So that's who you impressed Kia. Take from that what you wish. Another surprise is just how darn big this thing is. The wheelbase on this is the same as a Kia Telluride. Like it's longer than six feet, that's for sure. It kind of makes it a bit weird when you're going around tight corners. Um, I'm sorry, Kia, but I nearly curved that tire a couple times. Just, you don't expect it to be this long. Coming around to the tailgate, Kia does have a thing where if you stand here for six seconds, it'll open up. I think it needs to be locked, but whatever. You can just touch it right there. One important note is that there is no sensor. So if your garage is a little bit low, um, mine's here, it actually goes up to there. You have to hold this button for three seconds to set the height. Pretty simple, fairly standard. I didn't know because I don't come from a power tailgate family. In here, there's a good amount of space and you're able to put down the seats just like that. Works awesome. It is kind of annoying that they give you this. It's your charging cable if you want to just plug into a random house socket. But I don't get why they couldn't have just packaged it in a way that goes underneath right here, or maybe in the incredibly small frunk. It's just kind of awkward. I would take out the cable and throw away this package. Overall though, the functionality here is pretty great. Like this bit, you can take out and stash underneath. Okay, it's kind of difficult. Just like that. One thing I was kind of shocked to learn is that this one with the 14 speaker Meridian sound system has a subwoofer. They really fooled me because somewhere around 80 Hertz, it just rolls off into nothing. There's, there's no sub bass whatsoever. Let's have a look at it though. I'm guessing there's a little six inch sub in here, but it does not do a whole lot. The good news is though, that the other 13 speakers are quite good. So if you are an audiophile, you will likely be very happy by just chucking this sub in the garbage and putting like another little sub down here with an LC2i. And if you are not an audiophile, you'll probably be happy with the standard six speakers setup. Even though getting these seats down was super easy, in order to put them back up, you need to come around here and pull that. It's pretty simple, but not the most intuitive. Getting in though, this is my first time in the back seats. This is quite a nice little area. It's pretty borderline. My hair is hitting, but my head isn't. I'm six feet tall, by the way. These seats are comfy. You have heated seats. I'm sure that's only a top trim option. We also even have little USB charging ports on the sides of these seats. I just moved the trunk cover back one notch and now, oh, I can recline. Sweet. Oh, when you go back, you'll lose a lot of headroom. That's too bad. <laughs> oh, this thing goes up with it. Moving up to the front though, the storage situation is a little bit weird. So LTT water bottle does not fit, unfortunately. And this little spot here 
is not storage, it's a fuse box. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in the driver's seat, there's a whole lot of, did you guys even test this? Like this is a brand new electric vehicle and there's not really a good spot to put your phone. Well, there is, it's right here. There's even a Qi charger. But unfortunately, that means that I can't use Android Auto because that's wired only. And in fairness, you should use wired only just because the audio is so much better. But like, they very easily could have had a USB port here, little cord that goes up to my phone, would have been awesome, but they didn't. So instead, the USB port's way up in here, and my phone, I have to plug in and chuck down there. Not a huge issue, that's not too bad, but it means that I can't put my water bottle down there because it's gonna bash up my phone. I guess this means that I just have to chuck my water bottle into the back seat. It is nice that it will remind me though to grab it. Andy was getting in the back seat for a B-roll shot and now he's locked in. Uh, uh help me <laughs> We have no idea how to turn off the child locks in this. It's actually a problem. <laughs> Now it's time to address the worst part of this car. Um, everything here, all, all of the stuff that you interact with. But first, I'm gonna tell you about our sponsor. Thanks to Grammarly for sponsoring this video. Grammarly is an all-in-one writing tool that helps you with your grammar and spelling suggestions. You can save time with your countless work emails using Grammarly. It's simple to install with a free desktop app, log in and get typing. There's also Grammarly Premium, which provides more in-depth feedback on your writing. We recommend checking out the Tone Detector tool. It helps ensure that you say what you mean in the appropriate and correct tone, so you can say goodbye to accidentally sending aggressive emails. Work smarter, not harder. Go to grammarly.com slash short circuit to sign up for a free account and get 20% off Grammarly Premium today to help save time and work more efficiently. This stuff, it's um, it's a mess, honestly. Porsche took at the tie can and they were like, what about we make things that were easy, way more difficult? And then VW came along and they were like, we can outdo you guys by a mile, make it just so much worse to use. And then Kia came along and was just like, VW, hold my beer. I'm gonna do this. So <laughs> here we have what is quite an awesome little spot. You know, you have your volume, tune, seek next track, your media. All of this is great, shut up. It's not the most responsive either. Our problem is though, where are our climate controls? Uh, you have to press that. Now we don't have volume. We do have temperature and our fan speeds right here. But now I have no media controls. It's just, uh, <laughs> why? Why did you have to do this Kia? The absolute worst part about this, you might also accidentally hit one of these, I cannot recall how many times I've been just driving down the road and been like, why is my arse 100 degrees? It's because when I was hitting some of this, I rest my hand here and accidentally press any of these buttons. The passenger seat cooling is a pretty common one that I hit as well. It's terrible. As for, you know, the actual touchscreen that's here, it works perfectly fine. My biggest complaint about it is that it's just a little bit too far away. I kind of need to Approach forward every time that I use it, making it just not as nice to use. I'm sure with a week or two, you'll have it down. What there is a problem with though, is the 12 inch screen that's directly in front of me. It's a uh, kind of a waste. So we can look here. Uh, we have my speed on the left here, which is typically occluded by the steering wheel. Fortunately, we do have a heads up display. That's the only thing that I've been using for speed, pretty much. We also have our charging over on the right. Same thing, can't see it because of the steering wheel. But what sucks is that in the center, I can't put anything that's useful there. So we have attention mode. My last break was 13 minutes ago, apparently. Um, I could not care less about that. You go here, drive info. It's all fine information that I want to have, but a speedometer would be a lot more useful. We have a compass, but no map. If it was a map, I would be totally fine with it. And information, this one's kind of cool. If you look at it, then uh, I don't know, it's fine. It's just, ugh. Andy just asked if when you have nav on, if it will show in here. As far as I can tell, no. It only tells you like the next turn that you have to do. So uh, let's say, I wanna go over here. Set as destination, sure. 
It does tell you when your next turn is, but it's not giving you an actual map and it seems kind of like a waste. Let's take it for a drive though, because for the most part, that is a good point in this. Driving around, the first thing that you might notice is that that camera is pretty shaky. Uh, this is a very smooth road. The ride is just a little bit on the harsh side. It's, well, it's pretty typical EV stuff, really. The Volvo had the same problem where it's just a little bit harsh, especially when you're going a little bit slower. And then as you get going faster, it sort of evens out a little bit. What I was hoping was that this car has electronically adjustable dampers. So I can put it in sport mode here and the whole thing stiffens up. It's pretty awesome actually. But when I put it in eco or normal, it doesn't get quite as comfortable as I would like. There also is the added downside that there's no custom mode. So I can't go in and play around with having like the dampers on their softest settings and having the powertrain in its sportiest setting. And I can just do eco mode with my right foot. Speaking of my right foot though, there is a lot behind it. This thing has 320 horsepower and 446 foot pounds of torque. Now, realistically, you're probably not buying the one that's that powerful, but uh, if you do, it has a zero to 60 in 4.6 seconds. It is shockingly quick up until about 100 kilometers per hour, at which point it sort of tapers off and isn't super fast. But how many people that buy this are going to care if they can smoke like a Corvette at 150? I doubt it. One thing to note though, is that as the battery drops down past about 50%, you do lose that initial snap. And also you can turn off traction control and it snaps even harder. <laughs> I love that you can turn off traction control in this. It's just, it's just great. For the range, it's really quite good. You can get about 350 kilometers real world with climate control settings that are reasonable and a slightly heavy right foot pretty easily. I think for most people, that's gonna be more than enough. As for charging, it's your typical non-Tesla EV, just huge pain in the ass. Unless of course you have a charger at your house, in which case you will charge it up there and probably never charge it up anywhere else except on long road trips. One thing that's nice when you're driving around is say you're like changing a lane. When you turn on your signal, you get a little camera up here. It's pretty awesome actually. And also if there is someone in your blind spot, it will show up a little red thing on the HUD and around your car. So you'd have to try pretty hard to lane change into someone. Overall, this car is very good, but like everything else, it has a bunch of little annoyances that just add up to not really loving it. So like we have these flappy paddles here and they change the amount of regenerative braking that you have. I personally like it the most with the eye pedal on. That's your, you know, one pedal driving. It'll completely stop you if you let off of it. The problem is though, is that I don't know why, but it'll just randomly leave this mode. So you'll be in the not single pedal regenerative braking, which is about the same until about 10 kilometers per hour, at which point it starts moving forward on you. So if you're expecting it to stop, it's kind of just a little bit scary. It's just strange. The adaptive cruise in the EV6 is quite good. It isn't exceptional like Audi's system. So like if there's a car that stopped in front of you, it will stop you, but it's, it's a bit butt clenchy. If there's just someone driving in front of you though, or you're in stop and go traffic, it's pretty awesome. Also, the lane keep assist is quite good. It's, it's a little ping pongy I found, but I actually used it, which is more than I can say about pretty much every other car that I had. I think it's mostly down to having the hard button here to enable and disable it. So when things get a little bit too complicated, I can easily take over. Unlike in the Volvo where just it's two menus deep, never used it. One thing I love about this car though, is the windshield wiper stock. It is just hands down the best windshield wiper stock I have used in a car. So you turn it and it just gives you a little readout of what your front wipers are, how much your auto wiper setting is. It's easy and simple to use and well thought through. It's also a carryover from non-EV Kias. So I guess that's why it's well thought through. <laughs> oh, let's just pull over right here, Andy, to show the people our absolutely fantastic parking camera. Uh, there we go. Look at this. You have the 360 there 
and this one that you can just turn around so you know exactly where you are. It's by far the best 360 camera that I've ever seen in a car. It is a little prone to dirt and water getting on it, but it really isn't that bad. The only thing that does kind of suck is that it shows up a white car here instead of a blue one. Everyone should color match. Well, while we're pausing for one sec, just stay here, Andy. Watch this. Okay, maybe I have to get in the position. Come on. Yeah. Ah. You're supposed to be able to hold these buttons and it moves forward and backwards so you can get into small parking spots. I, I can't get it to work right now. Andy wants to do another launch. Uh, that was good. That was a good one. <laughs> oh. My headphone is in the truck now. <laughs> oh my God. For Such, real. So I good. I don't have my headphone now. <laughs> Electric torque is so great. What isn't great, but it's more just fine, is the handling. It's reasonably sporty. I'll put it in sport mode. Yeah, a little bit sharper now. There's quite a bit of body roll, even though like all the weight's nice and down low, it's skateboard platform. And as you push on, it's just, it's all understeer, 100%. I don't even think that like changing the anti-roll bars out will be able to help you too much there. That said, if you're coming from an SUV, this will be freaking incredible. You'll love the handling. If you come from, I don't know, a Golf GTI like me, you won't be as happy. Oh, I nearly forgot. These seats, they're pretty good. They're heated and cooled. The cooling only comes in the top spec GT line, but they're nice and comfy. They hold me in reasonably well. I appreciate them. The only thing that I don't like about the driving position is that the steering wheel has to be just a touch higher than I want so that I can, you know, see my speed. Oh, can I hands-free this corner? Nope, Whoa. nope, we can't, crash. that that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> oh, I have a little twisty here though. Sport mode. Oh. Yeah, it's, you're not whipping it around corners. It's certainly no Fiesta ST. Finally, the price. This one right here is in British Columbia in Canadian dollars, $65,000. And for that, I would buy a Tesla, probably. I'm not a huge Tesla fan, but if those are my options, yeah. That said, I would easily buy this over an ID4. So the Kia EV6, it's quite a good car with just so many tiny little screw ups that I, I don't know, I don't like it in the end. Like even just little things, like we have these dedicated buttons here that you can change to whatever you want, except that it isn't really whatever I want. Like we have a steering wheel button here for, I put it to quiet mode, which turns off the back speakers for your children to sleep. That might be useful, maybe. <laughs> the other mode button here, they were so useless that I ended up just setting it to sounds of nature. It was the one that I thought was the funniest. So I just kind of threw it away on a gag. Oh, and there also were fake engine sounds. I just turned those off. I was kind of driving around being like, why is it so loud? And it was just the speakers being like, the whole time. <laughs> so yeah, the Kia EV6 makes me want to drive the Ionic 5 really bad. Sorry, Kia, better luck next time. Okay, good note to end on. I liked it more than the Audi e-tron mostly because it's way less expensive. Hit like, get subscribed, and just have a fantastic day.